Hi everyone! So here I am again for the YouTube video. This video was not actually one of my planned videos so I don't know how this is gonna go but it's just gonna be kind of a casual thing. Um, I figured I'd do it because as you can tell I have my tent set up so that means sugar glider time. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that um, sugar gliders need their claws trimmed just like a cat and just like a dog. So um, I'm going to be trimming my sugar gliders claws tonight and I'm not too sure how good you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing because as you'll find out in a little bit I've got one sugar glider that's pretty tame and she's pretty easy for her claws to get trimmed and then I have another one that I have to actually fight with to trim her nails. She absolutely hates it. So, um, yeah, we're going to see how this is going to go on camera. But I uh, just wanted to start out before I actually go and get my sugar gliders. And uh, just wanted to start out and say things that you need to trim a sugar glider's claws. So, you're going to need nail clippers. These are just baby nail clippers that you can buy in any drugstore. Um, you can use the curved nail clippers as well, but I just use the baby ones. Um, treats. Don't forget sugar glider treats. You're going to need those. <laughs> um, I have a bonding pouch here. Um, so this is just a pouch with a mesh in here. Um, it zippers closed so that they can't get out and it's just, yeah, so bonding pouch. Um, I have a fleece blanket, so it's a pretty big, big blanket, it, like, completely huge fleece blanket. Um, so this I'm going to use for the one that does not like getting her nails trimmed. So essentially what I have to do is I have to use the blanket as a mitt, I have to catch her, cover her head so she can't bite me, and then trim her nails. So, um... That's what this one's gonna be used for. And then I have what they call a nail trimming pouch. So again, this has a zipper closure at the top. It's just made of mesh. So I don't know how well you can see on the camera, but you can see me through it. It's just made of mesh. So um, what you can do is you can put your sugar glider inside of here, zip it closed so that they can't get out. And then as they hang on to the pouch, their nails stick through the mesh and then you can snip away on the outside of the mesh. The trick to this one though is getting the glider to stay still long enough to trim the nail. <laughs> um, I usually put a treat in here with them and sometimes they'll be busy gnawing on the treat and they'll just stay still. Um, hopefully that's going to be the case. This one I use for the one that doesn't mind her nails being done. Um, although sometimes I can get away with just giving her a treat on my leg and she'll let me trim. So we'll see which one goes down tonight. But those are the things that you're going to need for trimming a sugar glider's claws. So you're going to see both ends of the scale. The one that's easy and the one that's hard. <laughs> so let me go get the first sugar glider. Um, I'm going to do the easy one first, just so it doesn't freak any new sugar glider owners out. Most of the time, they're okay with it. So um, I'm going to get the easy one first. So I'll be back. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So in here, I've got the one that does not mind her nails being done most of the time. Her name is Evie. You've met her before. She's my little white girl. Here she comes. So I'm just gonna get a treat. I don't know how well you can see. Here she is. So I doubt you're gonna be able to really see me doing anything here because I can't get my camera close enough and juggle sugar gliders at the same time. So I'm just gonna talk. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna give her a treat, see if she wants that. She's just gonna sit here quite nice. I'm gonna snitch a foot. Oh, she's gonna go back in though. Come here. There you go. You sit there. There you go, baby. 
So she's just gonna sit here and she's gonna gnaw on her treat and I'm gonna snitch a foot and trim away. Oh. Now normally if you do this quite often, they get used to it as you can see and they don't really mind you playing with their feet. Hi babes. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to take your treat away. I know, I know, I want you to hold it with the other hand, please. <laughs> She's like, don't try and take my treat away. You wanna sit on the blanket? I need this foot though. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They do have a dominant hand um, that they will hold things with. So sometimes it can be tricky if you give them a treat to get them to let go with their dominant hand so you can trim it. You want to be as fast as you can because of course they are small they don't have a lot of patience <laughs> uh, so be as fast as you can but um on the sugar glider claws you'll notice that um it, their claws are hooked like this closer back to the foot there is a quick you don't want to cut that you want to cut it down here where it curves and just take off the end of the tip and then um, that's all you want to do. Um, their front feet are the ones that grow the worst. Um, the back feet don't normally need a lot of trimming, but sometimes. Sugar gliders do have two toes on their back feet um, that are fused together and those toes are called the grooming toes. Um, those toes you don't want to trim a lot. You can trim them if they get long, but normally I'm going to say you only need to trim them once every two or three times that you trim their claws because they don't grow a lot and you want them a little longer because they're the ones that they groom their fur with um so yeah you don't want to trim those a lot but she's done all four feet are done so it doesn't take long uh when they behave themselves <laughs> i have to trim their feet it really does not take long she is done i've trimmed all four feet I'll give you a little bit of a better view of the cute little stinker. This is Evie, my first of my two, eating her treat. And watching the cat. The cat is walking over across the floor. <laughs> That is Evie. So now to get her back into her cage, I'll let her see the bonding pouch and she'll go into it. Normally she loves being in this thing. There you go. There you go. They do like their pouches. She's going to be stubborn tonight. She's like, no, I don't want to go out. Come here, babes. There you go. I just zip her in. She's contained in here now so I can take her out and safely put her back in her cage. I don't like letting them um, wander my house. Some people do. Um, they're quite fine with having them just wander around and be free in the house. 
um, obviously if you've watched my other channels you'll know that I have cats and dogs so um, yeah I don't like them to be wandering around in my house because I have way too many nooks and crannies for them to disappear in and never be seen again <laughs> so um, I use my tent and they're they're free in the tent um, and then coming from point A to point B from the tent to their cage I use the bonding pouch um, or a cage pouch this is her cage one of her cage cage pouches so and yes it's baby shark <laughs> it's so adorable I had to get it when I saw it <laughs> but uh, in her cage pouch here she's got little pieces of fleeces her little blankies and the weirdest thing this is not part of nail trimming but I have to show this because I just think it is so darn stinking cute Ever since I got her, which was about five years ago now, I think, five or six, something like that. Anyway, ever since I got her, um, she has had one toy that she absolutely loves to death. And she even takes it to bed with her. <laughs> and it's so funny because all it is, is a plastic ring. <laughs> with a little heart on it. As you can see, she's chewed it pretty good. And she absolutely loves this thing. I will take it out of her pouch and put it in the bottom of her cage. And that night when she comes out, she will take it and she will work with this thing until she gets it back in her pouch with her. She sleeps with this thing all the time. <laughs> so, um, I guess I just leave it in there because she loves it and I'm like it's such a simple toy you have such more many more intricate toys in her cage that you would think she would love but she loves a plastic ring <laughs> it's like a cat in a cardboard box <laughs> so anyway um before I get Rose out, I actually had a question last time that um, I had a sugar glider video that I wanted to answer. So um, a lot of people said that they never see Evie and Rose together in the, like me holding them both together. Um, there's a reason for that. <laughs> yes, uh, sugar gliders, as I've mentioned before, are colony animals, so you have to have more than one. Um, however, there will be, you know, the one in a million chance that a sugar glider just will not get along with other sugar gliders. And I got that one in a million chance. Um, Rose, the one you're going to see, the cranky one as I call her, uh, refuses. Just absolutely refuses to get along with Evie. I've tried many times. I have tried. I have done all the stages. I have done pouch swapping, cage swapping, um, carrying them around in bonding pouches together, um, you know, introducing them in neutral territory where there's no other glider sense, like in the bathtub. Um, I've tried everything and she just instantly fights. So they are not in the same cage. They are in two separate cages. The cages are side by side so they can see each other, they can talk to each other, but they can't get to each other because Rose fights. So I kind of feel bad for Evie because I'm sure Evie would absolutely love a cage mate. Um, and I might consider getting her one um, in the future. But right now, I just have too many animals and I don't want to take on another one. <laughs> um, maybe when my doves pass away. Let's, let's put it that way. Maybe when my doves pass away, they're pretty old right now. So, you know, I, they're not going to live too many more years, I don't think. So, you know, maybe when they pass away, I might consider taking on another sugar glider around Evie's age and trying to introduce them together. Um, but Rose will forever be alone because she just doesn't like other gliders. So that's why you never see them in the same video because I would have a glider fight 
on my hands and when they fight they fight nasty <laughs> so I don't want that <laughs> um, so yeah that answers the question that I got asked a little while ago so I am going to go put Evie back in her cage and I'm going to go grab Rose and then the fun will begin because she fights me she's gonna be all over like all over this tent and I'm going to be trying to chase her down and catch her and then trim you're probably gonna hear crabbing if you haven't heard crabbing before you're probably gonna hear crabbing <laughs> a lot of people when they see me do this my friends have seen me do this before and a lot of people are like oh my god you're gonna hurt her I'm like no no I'm not hurting her so if it looks like I'm hurting her no I am not hurting her she's absolutely fine I've done this many times she's absolutely fine so don't panic <laughs> okay here we go hi guys okay so I had a pre run in with the sugar glider and I got her in here that's her tail <laughs> so this is literally what I'm gonna do I trap her in here take my nail clippers and away I go she does not like it truthfully I don't like doing it this way I would much rather prefer to trim a sugar glider that's nice and calm and that I don't have to fight with or stress out like yes this is stressful for them but it's one of those things that need to be done So, unfortunately, she's actually a type of sugar glider that her claws grow very, very fast and very, very long, unfortunately. I wish it wasn't that way because she's so stressful to trim, but she is. Um, just the way it is so as you can see well I don't know how well you can see but I just got her in here she's tucked away safe and sound she's actually not crabbing this is actually like a miracle normally she's like crabbing to high heaven right now she's not crabbing I have her in here pretty tight I'm not gonna lie as you can see she's pretty squished in there that's her head right there um, don't be afraid of hurting them you're not going to hurt them um, they're small and you can nope there's a little crab you can trap them in here pretty good you're not gonna hurt them you have to hold them pretty tight or else they're gonna get away on you they're also gonna bite you if you don't hold them tight um, why I have her in here like this is because literally I have her head covered so that she can't bite me because given the chance she bite me <laughs> She, she would totally bite me. Which is understandable. Somebody was uh, manhandling me like this, I'd probably bite him too. Alright, so. I've got her claws trimmed. I'm going to try and get her in the bag here. I might not actually be able to do it. I might just keep her like this for now. She's fine. I'll put her back in her cage right away. So, uh, but yeah, that's how you trim sugar gliders. So she actually wasn't that bad tonight. Holy crap. I saw it for sure. You know, we got a little fur, but nothing serious. Um, I thought for sure she would be 
way harder. She's usually way harder. She, I usually have to like catch and release her like four different times. She's trying to wiggle now. Uh, like four different times before I can get all of her feet done. Um, she actually stayed pretty still this time. So this is actually a good video. <laughs> Um, why don't you do this all the time? <laughs> um, uh, but that's, uh, that's part of sugar glider care. Um, you have uh, to trim uh, their, their nails and that's how you do it. So thanks for watching. If you like this, uh, like, and subscribe. All of my social media channels are down below where you can see other videos and pictures of these cute little critters and, uh, catch you next time. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.